keep going up. Right, and of course, I don't think it's a great comparison considering that one of them is still alive and the other is not, and the comparison really should end there. However, he's making the point that Democrats are going to seek to punish him by any means necessary. We've seen this in New York this week. Democrats have realized that if they can't beat Trump in the polls, then at the very least, they're going to try to bankrupt and humiliate him. And that's what's happening with their lawfare campaign. So he makes a valid point that he is being mm -hmm. politically persecuted. However, I think this comparison is a little bit too far. Kevin played a little bit of this, uh, Lauren, about 15, 20 seconds ago. But this is where the former president talked about the current president being in decline. Well, he's uh, he's declined and there's no question about it. But he was always sort of semi declined. If you go back 25 years, <laughs> no, but he was not one of the smarter people. He's tried to be president many times, four times at least that they know of. And all of a sudden, when he's most diminished, this is when he hit and he, he did it. I mean, they were given a gift by the special counsel here, Lauren, because they will use this again yes. and again until November of this year. Yes, and I'm so glad Kaylee started her answer the way she did. I absolutely agree that if you're the former leader of the free world, you have an obligation not to compare the president of the United States to a murderous dictator. But the point is, to the second clip, that it doesn't matter because the fact that Trump is out there talking to people, taking questions mm -hmm. from the audience, engaging with the anchors and questioners is something the current commander in chief is not doing. And so I was just so struck by how low the bar was. But yes, I mean, Trump should do this as often as possible because he's communicating with the public and the president is not. Yeah. Uh, respected analyst Nate Silver wrote this. Lead me if you can, Katie, because I don't have the paper in front of me. But he wrote fully. He is a historically unpopular incumbent talking about Joe Biden and the oldest man to ever hold this office. We've reported on both of those realities extensively. And the White House has been extremely upset about it. That's the New York Times. Let's go to yeah, because that was the, the publisher of the New York Times, Kaylee McGee White, where the White House is very upset that they are writing this stuff about him. What do you think about that? Well, it just shows that the White House has become completely dependent on the media, the leftist media, to do its job for them, to sell Biden to the American people. And of course, the media is still very forgiving of Biden, given his many gaffes and his many blunders. But as soon as they point out the fact that he would be 86 years old, if he completed a second term, as soon as they point out the fact that his approval ratings have stayed in the gutters, the Biden campaign lashes out. In fact, they had a meeting last month with The New York Times, which reportedly did not go well, where the Biden campaign vented their frustration that The New York Times wasn't providing the usual glowing coverage. So here's the thing. If Biden cannot sell himself to the American people, why should the media have to do it for him? Yeah. And finally, back to you, Lauren, because I was going to put up this soundbite or this quote from Nate Silver, um, Nate Silver, very respected analyst, where he's talking about Biden either needs to put up or he needs to shut up. And he's saying the put up part is he's got to go out and he's got to do interviews and he has got to start speaking to the media because they have to be able to tell whether he is, you know, cognitively capable. I don't think he can. And, and here's why. His communications team, the president's, that is, is not inept. These are very professional, experienced, cam former campaign people, PR people, very serious communications operators. And they've clearly made the decision that putting him out there is so risky that it's worth the criticism to hide him and, you know, compare them with, for instance, Kamala Harris's operation, which leaks all the time like a sieve. And so, yeah. yes, they have made this decision. They've considered it seriously. And it's very striking because I think if they could, they would. And they're not. Yeah, yeah it is striking. Lauren Wright, Kayla McGee-White, thank you both.